So hello everybody, in today's video I'm going to show you how you can write back to a data source that does not allow it using Power BI and Power Apps. All of that in just a second. Okay, so I'm going to show you an example here, probably not the best, but you would get the idea anyhow. So I have here a table, uh, it says uh, supplier, location, product ID, purchase value and discount. And imagine that you would like to be able to input new discounts in here like you would do in excel you know you click on a cell and to get a new value now this data source is actually data embedded in power bi but it could be a web source that you don't have access to. It could be that you import it from Excel files, you clean the data and that data is clean and you don't have access to it anywhere. And you would like to actually be able to write back to, to change values into in Power BI. So how do we do that? This is what we're going to do. Uh, we are going to go to SharePoint. If you have Office 365, you have SharePoint, so you will be able to do this. In SharePoint, we're going to create a site, and then we're going to create a new list. We're going to call it Discount, create it. And here we're going to add a new column where we will put the discount. So it's going to be a single line of text. No, 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 no. It's going to actually be a number, number, discount and then maybe we should call it updated so we can then differentiate it in power bi updated discount and then we're going to have this as a number with the two decimals and save and we're going to use the title as the ID for the line. So we're going to go here, list settings is the easiest way than when we create a power app to manage this. So this is going to be our row ID. Okay. So we go back to discount settings and now we have a list that contains a row ID. So an identifier for each row in our table and then a discount. We're going to go in here and click create an app and it's going to do discount is going to do all the work for us. It's just amazing. So I'll show you. This is actually creating the app while we are looking. It's so cool. <coughs> it takes around 30 seconds. It goes very, very quickly. We're going to modify the app a little bit <coughs> to do it exactly what we want, but it is more or less ready. Come on, baby. Yes. So here we have the app. Let me show you. If you go here to play, you will, will be able to interact with the app. If we go to plus, you'll see that you have here an attachment part that we don't want. It is here on the edit screen. So we're going to get rid of that. We don't want that. When it comes to the detail screen, that is fine. And then when it comes to the browse screen, that is also fine. Let's give it a go. Let's go to, so it's good to test your 0.4 and there we have it good as you can see it has a new line we don't want that so we're going to click on the actual box and then we say we want to have only title and subtitle i don't want to have my name in there and what we want to do is put some labels here. So you have to select the item that you want and then click on insert label. And then I don't know why my name shows up all the time, row ID. And then we're going to make it a little bit smaller. That's a little bit too big. And to test that this works as expected, I always do like this. I create another row. 0 0.6 or 5, that's fine, 7. And as you can see, the label follows along, which is exactly what we want. And we are going to have also one for the 
discount. So label discount. Again, we want this a little bit smaller. That's a little bit too big. Make this thing smaller too. Put it in place somewhere. Obviously, you can do this a lot nicer <laughs> than I'm going to do it here, but this is something that you can, I'm sure, manage yourself. So this count there. Put this up here. Make this a little bit bigger. Looking good, right? <laughs> so this is our app. What we're going to do is we're going to save it and publish it so we can use it in Power BI. So publish, publish this version. Okay, so now we have our app done. Let's go back to Power BI. Okay, so now we go in here, we go to the Power Apps icon and remember you have to throw in a row or a field in here to, in order to be able to, to have it responsive. A bit annoying actually, because I always forget. Choose app. And then here's our discount app, add, skip. And here we have the app, right? Now we want to have the information from this app back into Power BI. So we're going to go here, go to new source, blank, no, blank query, uh, sorry, delete. We're going to new source, we're going to more. And then we're going to choose the SharePoint list. Um, it's thinking, okay. Uh, I think it is online services, SharePoint list. And then we're going to copy the URL, paste it in there and rem remove up to the site name, okay? And then you go to, you have to sign in. and connect and this will get us the list of new discounts that we are inputting manually nothing weird here so come on baby here we're going to get all the stuff that is on sharepoint we want to have our discount i think it's this one discount okay hopefully i picked the right one otherwise we're not going to get the information back uh, okay, so now we're going to find our row ID and our discount, remove everything else, give it a proper name, row ID, and then this is text, and this is a decimal number. Great, let's load this into Power BI, so now every time we write something into Power Apps, is going to update the SharePoint list and then Power BI is going to read from the SharePoint list and get that data back into Power BI. It is a, one of the workarounds to do this. Uh, so here we have our discount stable. Perfect. Now let's look at the relationships and see how Power BI, okay, didn't do anything. So here's the thing. I have shown you in two Dax Riders videos, how to create a row ID for a list, for a table. So I'm going to link to them down below so you can see them and they will pop up here somewhere. So I have already a row ID that I'm going to put in my table. And this is the first one. So again, I have two videos on how to do this exactly. So don't worry, you will be able to follow along. So you can see here that now every row is identified with a number, which is the numbers that we have here. So row 12 is row 12. So now what we're going to do is put row ID with row ID, do a relationship between those tables. And then we're going to put our update discount into, and you can see it's 12 and 13 that we have changed and those are the ones that showed up. Good. Now we have just the last part. We want to have a new update column or new discount column that will do like this. If there is no new discount, pick the old one. But if there is a new discount, 
pick the new one. How do we do that? Very, very easy. We go to create a measure. <coughs> Come on, baby. New this out this count. And then we do. We're going to create a variable for selected or for up. Uh, oops. Because we're going to use this twice. Updated discount. Which is going to be the selected value for updated discount. Return. And then we're going to do if is blank. Sell updated. So if our updated discount is blank, then put the value for the old discount, which is the supplier discount. Otherwise, give us the new updated discount. Okay. So we have the new measure, new discount, put it in there. And as you can see, it's working beautifully. We see here 20% is being overwritten by 04. You can actually create a um, parameter here that you can change the discount for all tables and then you can individually change every discount. It's super cool. Let's see if this works. Let's try it. So let's say that we want to change, let's like, oh, 70% discount is a little bit too high. So we go in here, edit. We say, I want to have 0.3 sounds better. And then I need to just update this, the discount table. Otherwise, you, you can update everything, obviously. But, you know, why do that? You can see that it changes to 0.3. And then you can add, obviously, a new one. You can say, okay, I want to have row ID 24. I want to have a discount of 0.7. Updated, goes up to SharePoint, changes it there, and Power BI pulls it back from SharePoint, brings it in here, and mash it up, and there you have it. How cool is this?